Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, uh, I want to thank Troy, North Carolina, for this report. But we've had an asteroid. It's called Asteroid 2013 XY8. Uh, it just passed by the Earth. Um, wow. I mean, uh, very close uh, at a distance of only 470,000 miles from the surface of the Earth, less than twice the distance to the Moon. Uh, it orbits the Sun, this, this asteroid does, every 3.3 years, swinging out about halfway to Jupiter's orbit and coming in to just inside the Earth's orbit. There's no danger from an impact from space from this rock at this time, but its current data shows it won't come back near the Earth again until the year 2072. But here's the key. Asteroid 2013 XY8 is a good reminder that there are lots of asteroids out there and we need to find them. We need to get better understanding of how to detect them quicker. And it's also a good reminder that finding them is not easy, folks. For instance, the, uh, we can judge an asteroid's size if we know, knowing its distance and how bright it appears to be. It also depends on how it, reflective it is. And is it shiny asteroid? Can it be smaller and look as bright as the one that's darker and bigger? Now, on average, asteroids reflect about 4% of the light that hits them using that number XY8 to calculate its size we get it's about 30 to 70 meters across, or about the size of a basketball court on the lower end, and more than half a football field on the higher end, all right? Now, here's something else you want to know. Uh, XY8 was just discovered a few days ago, December 7th. We didn't even know this asteroid existed until December 7th, and it went racing by the earth today on December 12th. We had five days. If this thing had been bigger, if this thing had been huge, we, we could spot it. We had to give ourselves five, six, seven days heads up, and that's it. If it was bringing a catastrophic event, there's no other way to prepare. And I think that's what Jesse Waltman's whole point is, that we're not getting all the facts from NASA on huge asteroids uh, and things coming toward the Earth. And matter of fact, when Mike from around the world, the government employee, uh, called into my live show a couple days ago and said that there is a massive amount of debris headed toward Earth. NASA knows about it. It's two to three years from reaching us. All the governments of the world know about it, and they are making preparations on how to deal with life after the asteroids, for it will not be the same as it is today. It will be some catastrophic damage upon the Earth. Now, not that it's going to happen in two to three years, but that's when they will begin to pepper the Earth. There'll be small pebbles at first. And then the, the rocks will get bigger. Well, now, when I read in the book of Revelation, I understand that those types of events are coming. Now, I don't know who Mike from around the world is. Very knowledgeable. Says he works for the federal government. He's going to retire soon and that this information definitely needs to be released. I'm going to ask Jesse Waltman of BP Earthwatch, does he, can he comprehend what Mike from around the world is trying to say and other scientists who are also predicting the same uh, events. I know this, the Bible says that the day is coming of a great day of wormwood uh, uh, in the Word of God in Revelation chapter 8. But what I didn't know was the name of Isen in Hebrew. What does it mean? The name Isen in Hebrew. Well, uh, Dave Shadow sent this to me, an information on it. That I find it fascinating. But let me read to you first Revelation 8.8. 8. Now this is out there in the future. We're not in the, we're not in the seven year tribulation. Uh, but we are certainly getting on the brink of the beast. And we definitely know that we're in the beginning of sorrows. And we are going to encounter 
a lot more things on the earth than what most people realize. They think that nothing's going to go bad until all of a sudden one day God flips the switch and it's the seven-year tribulation period. Folks, I'm sorry. You're, the earth is going to encounter tremendous events of sorrow and woes. And that's not even the tribulation period. And certainly not the wrath of God, which is out there yet. But listen to this. In Revelation 8, 8, and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had, that had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Uh, and the angel, the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And then you can continue to read on. Well, the Jewish, uh, the, Hebra the Hebraic uh, interpretation, if you will, of the word Isen in Hebrew, which is Rosh Dath Vahi which I am not good at speaking Hebrew. But the word rush means the very common word rosh. It means basically the head. It's used to indicate whatever leads or comes first, like a captain, a summit, a capstone. It's preceded by the particle beth in the form. Now also the word rosh is also used to indicate a certain plant called a head that yields poison, rosh, or gall, or venom, um, is a type of poison. And you can read about that if you want to in Deuteronomy 32.32 or in Psalm 69.21. So it is a bitter poisonous, a venomous poison. Now, the, the next root word for doth is draw water. The word means to draw water, specifically denotes a swinging door of a building. S since doors most commonly open inward, this thing draws you in, or to draw water. So the word means to draw, and sometimes, many times used as in drawing water, or drawing somebody closer. The next uh, understanding letter of the word, Isen, is Wa, which the word means hook or peg. Strictly reverse for the hooks, pegs, and it's even a word used for the, uh, the hooks of the tabernacle curtains, the veil in the tabernacle. And so the, the word Isen in Hebrew means bitter water being drawn and hooked like the hook on the veil. So, uh, just something, it's just kind of fascinating, it's, it's important to understand what the Hebraic understanding of the word is. We're going to have a powerful show today, I don't want you to miss it, so please uh, be with me today from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern at my website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want you to come. Sunday night, we had 123 people saved on our live broadcast. We had so many people that the phone lines couldn't contain them. I used to have 99 phone lines for people to call in and listen to the show. I've, I've increased it. We've invested and increased it to 250 phone lines. You can dial the number and listen to the show today at 347-324-5208. Or come to my website, listen, and watch the show live, chat at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Um, or you can watch it on Livestream.com. Or you can go to my new Livestream channel, which is www.new.livestream.com slash Pastor Paul Begley Prophecy. Now, if my website gets overrun and maxes out, then you can always jump to one of these other avenues. Or you can just listen to it on the radio at Blog Talk Radio at blogtalk.com. And just go to the coming apocalypse. So there's a lot of options to, to be able to hear the show. We expect a tremendous crowd again today. 
We had 123 people saved Sunday night. We had 30 saved Tuesday uh, when we had uh, Andy Firecharger with us as a guest. We had 19 people accept Christ as their Savior yesterday as we had the, the uh, Hagmans. Joe and Doug Hagman with us as our guests yesterday. and had another great crowd. And today, Jesse Waltman is uh, with us again. Uh, we look forward to tomorrow. Daryl Myatt will be our guest from Keller, Texas, talking Bible prophecy, specifically the Middle East and Israel and all of the events, Syria and everything going on, the Iranian nuke deal, everything going on with Israel and the Middle East. That is tomorrow's topic. Today, Jesse Waltman will give us an understanding of what's going on in the heavens with the comets and the asteroids, the meteorites, the space station that's in trouble and everything else. I'll see you guys this afternoon. Don't miss it. 12 noon Eastern. God bless.